So my name is Paul Awad. I work at uh, The Beat 92.5, and I'm the morning show producer there. And I've been doing that for now three years. So I'm in charge uh, with the rest of the team, the honor staff, of coming up with content for, for our show every morning. So it's a morning drive show. So people are listening to you more actively. So they want to feel like they have somebody to listen to and to, to engage with on a, on a daily basis. And the ultimate goal really is to create a bond and create a relationship and do content that's engaging enough for people to want to listen to you the next morning and the morning after that. My job is to come up with content, but also to, uh, on, on a technical side, to make sure the show runs smoothly in terms of what goes on the air, the commercials, the songs that are played. I'm in charge of timing. I have to hit eight o'clock at eight o'clock. We got to do news at eight, so it's got to be at eight. So I'm in charge of the rhythm as well. How long we have to talk, when we have to go to commercial, when we're coming back from commercial. Uh, I'm in the on-air staff's ear the whole time going, coming up 30, doing this here. Don't forget, we got to do this. Let's plug this promotion. Oh, let's tease what we're doing at eight o'clock right now. Sort of, I have a nice rundown of what I want to do on a daily basis. And these are instructions that I receive from our program director on a daily, on a weekly basis. He'll be like, okay, so let's push this. Let's work on this. This was not good. Let's focus on this. We didn't tease enough. We didn't talk about our promotion enough. Uh, the content this morning was a bit weaker. Let's f try to find another angle next time, something more engaging. There's so, it's, it's so, morning show is so fickle and little details are so important. And if you're not on the ball every morning, you're going to lose the battle. And it's that's live. a battle of ratings. It's live. And it's a battle of ratings. It means that because the way our rating systems work, it's called PPM, and it's a pager. So there's a thousand individuals in the city, also separated in, in, in demographics, okay? And they have a pager here, and this guy is counting minutes. Oh, he's the minutes to three minutes to the beat. Oh, they switched station, they went to a competition. Oh, they went back. So every minute counts. Every second counts in radio. So if I get, if I get somebody to listen to me seven minutes and a competition six minutes, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. So every, in radio, every second counts. Uh, so there's a study that says that the average commute of a person is about half an hour. But every 15 minutes, they're switching stations about 22 times. So 22 times, they're going away from your, from your station and going to another one. The art of radio today is how do we get them back? How do I get them to tune back in after they've gone, they've heard commercials? We all know when you hear a commercial, you're out of there, right? But how do I get them to come back? So it's the art of teasing. It's become a world of, hey, find out what uh, Justin Timberlake did last night in Montreal. He might have gotten in a little trouble and we'll tell you why. We'll tell you what he did coming up in minutes. Because at the end of the day, when our employer is going to go, as a, when a salesman is going to go pitch on a deal, he's going to go, check this out, man. We kill. You want you you want people to hear your 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 commercial? It's it's here. So the teaser yeah is a hook. Is like a hook. The songwriter writes hooks. The, yeah. The, the, radio the radio guy producer yeah writes teasers. Yeah, but when you tease, you better have the goods when we, when you come back. It's how do I create content that's engaging, that's relatable, and that people feel a connection to every time I talk about it. You know, I'll give you a great example. Uh, we were doing a topic one morning where the announcer admitted on, on the air that he reads his daughter's text messages to see, just to look and to make sure that she's okay, that she's not in trouble, that she's on the right path. You know what I mean? Like any parent's concern. And the, the song ended and he turned on the microphone and the first words out of his mouth were, I think I'm a bad father. Tell me you're not hooked. Tell me that right now you're not engaged and you don't want to go, why? Why, is he say, why would somebody say that? And the co-host went, what do you mean? Why would you say that? And then he went on and explained, and he said, I don't know, is this right? And let me tell you, the phone lines blew up. This text message account blew up. You're always on the lookout. You're always conscious of it. You're conscious of 
you become sort of an expert on human behavior almost. Because you're looking at people going, is that their first date? Ah, oh, he wore that on his first date? Oh, fuck, that's a really good. I should talk about it. Like, first dates, do's and don'ts. Because who wears that shirt on a first date? Bang, you write that down. But now, how do I make it relatable to me or to the... Because the greatest way to enter any subject is, so last time I was on a date, and I think I wore the wrong shirt, and I've, I think I screwed myself. As opposed to, studies say that you should not wear a green shirt. That's boring. That's so generic. So that's why you got to live. You got to be able to say, last night I went on a date and I think I screwed myself. And I can't, so embarrassed, but I'll tell you what, what I did coming up. And then you get into it right away. No, no, hey, it's the Beat 92.5, Montreal's perfect mix. It's 32 degrees today, beautiful. No, that's, that's done. That doesn't exist anymore. It's, so last night I was on a date and I made a big mistake. Whoa, what'd you do? Oh, you're not going to believe it. So I wore this flashy shirt and she kept looking at it. And I think, I, like, I think she's not into me anymore. Boom, you're in it. You're right away. And then tell them the, tell them the weather after. Tell them what time it is later. They'll stick around. It's a beautiful thing, but it's a constant. It's a, it's a constant search for that. And you can have a great show, right? You come in Monday morning and you do a kick-ass show. And you're like, that was amazing, right? Once it's 9 o'clock and your show's over, you've forgotten about it. And you, you clear the board, literally, because there's a board with all their stuff in it. You clear that board and you go, okay, tomorrow. And there it is again, that blank page. And you got to figure it out again tomorrow. And you do that Wednesday, and you do that Thursday, and you do that Friday. Every day. It's a blank slate and another chance to gain a new listener, but also you're taking a risk on losing one. So you have to be very, 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 very conscious of that or else you're done. Okay, so at the beat, uh, our primary demo is female, 25 54. It's a big demo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, where, that's where our, in sales-wise, that's where they focus. We have a fictitious listener. Her name is Jessica, and she's 37 years old. And she has two kids, and she's single, and she's a bank manager, and she drives a Civic. How's she look? She's beautiful. Okay. She's like every woman. And her, she, she is busy. She doesn't have a lot of time. She's busy with the kids, but she has a few minutes a day on her way to work or on her, on, on her drive back to work to kind of let loose and have a good time. And that's where we come in. We give her 10 minutes of escape from her reality. So it's positive vibes, it's good times, it's informative, but it's a party. We want her to feel, she's, four, she's 37, she wants to feel 25 and we'll make her feel 25. You understand? Escapism. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what it is. You know, everybody wants to hear about gossip, about uh, celebrity gossip, right? It's, we know, we know as radio people that people are interested in that. You, you give them that, but then you, it's okay to challenge your listeners too and go, I'm going to give you stuff, real life stuff. I mean, look at Howard Stern. Howard Stern made a living and a bazillion dollars on one thing. He said, I'll never lie to my audience, I'll always tell them the truth. And I'll always tell them what's going on in my life and I'll never hide anything. That's a good question. I think that more and more, we're attracted to the superficial. But because information is so diluted, there's so much stuff going on. I don't think I don't think people are, we underestimate their intelligence, but I think we underestimate their lack of attention. People don't have 35 seconds to hear you talk. You have five seconds to engage your listener. You have five seconds to get them interested in what you're about to say. Or? They're gone. They've switched. You've lost them. I wake up at 3.30 every morning. Our show starts at 5.30. I'm the first guy there. And it's not by, because I have to, it's by choice. When announcers walk in, I'm already there. And I've maybe thought of a few other things, or I've read a few things the night before or the morning of. That's important to be on the ball. You gotta, as a producer, you gotta give them options. And I've always done that 
when your uh, when your on-air guy goes, so what do we do here? My answer is always, well, you have the choice. We can do A, B, or C. Always give them the power. At the end of the day, it's their call. The only thing you can do is give them options. If they don't take your idea or they don't take the best one in your opinion, it doesn't matter. Because sometimes they'll take the one you think is not as good, but they'll turn it into something amazing because they believe in that one. You know what I mean? They're performers. They're the talent. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I play a big role. Yes, I have a... I, I have an important role, and yes, I impact the show, but I would not be able to do what they do, and you have to respect that. If you don't respect the announcer, then you're done. You have to be in awe of what they can do. They can turn that mic on and take the most basic little subject and turn it into something amazing, and that's their, that's their talent, the storytelling, the way, the engaging, the fun, the energy, the projection of the voice, uh, the whole thing. When you, when you end up where you always wanted to be or knew you wanted to be, you go. On, it's an autopilot. It just makes sense. It's as easy as that, man. Before you came into REC, what were you doing? Just really. Quick? I was in. I was a, a confused uh, m young guy in my mid twenties, and I didn't know what I was wanted to do. I knew that. I didn't know where I wanted to go, but I knew one thing, where I was, the path I was going down was not the one I wanted to be in. I didn't want to be a tie-wearing, suit-wearing, pencil-pushing kind of guy, but that's where I was going, down the road I was going. I knew I had good leadership skills, and I knew that if I wanted to ever go into like, you know, management or whatever, I'd be successful. But I didn't, I didn't want to do that. So I was 25, and I was in university, and I was finishing up a degree, and I took a leap of faith, and I said, "I'm, I'm gonna stop, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into music because that's that's my love." I said, "I have to find a way to live around music." What RAC did, other than you know, teach you the basics about sound and you know how to use a board and what a mic does and all that good stuff, it solidified that this is where I ha this is this is good. This is where I'm supposed to be. I didn't want to be a hip hop superstar. I didn't want to be uh, like a, in a band. I wanted to work the technical side. I love that. That's what I want. I want to be behind the scenes. I don't want people. I don't want to be in front of the camera. You know, this is ironic right now, but I like. I like I'm very comfortable behind the scenes. And I knew that I want to be in a technical, whether it's working in a studio or working on records or working on a film set. Or working in radio, it wasn't radio. wasn't the thing that I was like. That's where I gotta go. It just, I, I sort of fell into it, quote unquote. But it solidified the fact that okay, this is good. This is creative enough because I'm I'm a very creative guy. This is good. This is a way for me to put a mark on the world somehow. I had that craving. And I needed that, and I felt like working on a record is my way of of. You know, putting my stamp on something in life, and I wanted to feel like I could do something that's bigger than me. You know what I mean? So that that's what that's what the school did. The school also put me. We had this uh, internship thing with Pop Montreal, and I, that was the beginning of. It's what set precedent to getting the you know the ball rolling in terms of my career. You know, if you want to call it that. So this is a really cool story. I was working at the Pop Montreal Festival, and this guy walks in and goes, hey, what's up, Mark? Hey, what's up, Mark? Because you're going to be working with me for the next four days. Cool. And he's like, so I need you to, you know, it's a band, it's a 16-piece. <coughs> they got brass, they got all kinds of stuff. So, you know, set it up, you know, snakes and all that good stuff, and bring it down to the board and set up the whole thing and let me know. You know, I'm just going to go have a cigarette. And I was confident enough to know that I could do, you know, I could do that. Boom, 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 get everything ready, put the board, normalize it, write down everything for him, give him a sheet, you know, like they teach you here, give him one, then and then. He looks, he goes, amazing, great, man, cool. Then the next day, it was almost a little bit of the same thing, but you know, you're talking with the guy, you're creating this, you know, bond, and you're, you know, he knows how hard it is to get into this business. He's in it, but he knows where you're coming from. He remembers that. 
And you know, he's like, yeah, it's hard, but you know, you'll you'll find a way. And if you really like this, you're gonna put on a lot of work. He goes, it's a it's a bitch, but it's worth it if you want to, you know. And and that was my goal. I was like, I don't care. I just gotta do this. And then four days later, it was it had become, hey, what's up, Paul? Or or text. Uh, so yeah, just set it up. Let me know if you need anything. Cool, man. Boom, set it up. Oh, you know what? Why don't you handle the board to, uh, for the first two shows? I'll come uh, for the first two bands. I'll come in later. No problem. Man. Bam, bam. At the end, I was, you know, do, mixing the show, and uh, and doing, you know, doing the live show on my own. Comes in. What's up? Bam, bam. And at one point, one guy goes, "Do you know who you're working with?" I go, "No, I have no idea." He goes, "This guy is a Grammy winner. He's the engineer for Arcade Fire. This is Mark Lawson." I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" Because yeah, man, this is this is the big time, man. This is the big leagues, and it changed everything. And I'm like, okay, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. And after the four days, he's like, "You're a good guy. You work hard. You're, I like your your attitude and stuff like that." I'm like, hey, thanks, man. He goes, "Give me your number. If I ever need you, I'll call you." You know how many times I've heard that? I'm like, all right, whatever. So I give my number. Six months later, he called. And he said, okay, I got a gig for you. It's a band, they're virtually unknown. It's me and you, I can't pay you. You gotta drive to Farnham, an hour and a half, every day, you gotta pick up gear, you gotta drop people to the airport. You gotta, he goes, you gotta cook, you gotta make coffee, and I can't pay you, and it's long days. Are you in? I said, absolutely, where do I sign? He goes, meet me tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., done. We did it one week, every day, we worked. And that's where it started to understand what the business is, that it's not glamorous, it's a lot of work, it's hard, it's tedious, it gets boring, it gets frustrating. We did three, four, out, four, four projects together, but that's, the, that's where you're at the Harvard of the music industry, because you're, you're sitting with a Grammy-winning artist, like at one point, when, Will, Will, Will what's his name? When, when Butler is sitting on your left, because his buddy is the guy you're tracking, and Mark Lawson sitting on your right, and you're, you're in the middle, and you're like, are you kidding me? Like, I made it. This is it, right? And that's where reality hits you. Because then I never heard from him again, because he went in a project that, that I wasn't involved in. And I was back to waiting tables. And that's where reality hit, going, this business is so fickle. One moment you're doing something amazing, and then the next second you're back to waiting tables. But that's what drove me to go, I got a taste of it, I gotta have more. I need that, that's, that's what I need. So I was waiting tables, working in a restaurant, down and out. There had been two years, no work, nothing. It's just waiting tables. But the dream is there, and I'm like, I don't care. I'm gonna pull out feelers. You know, you put out CVs, you call guys, you put, nothing try like did I make a mistake did I just screw up is this the end you know what I mean and it's it's almost like a it's almost like a movie Tuesday night this two people walk in sit down at a table and the manager goes okay one of you's got to go home and one of you's got to take that table the other waiter goes I want to go home I go all right I'll take it and I sit down uh, and they sit down and I serve them and I hit it off with one of the girls, super nice. I'm like, it's amazing. And then she goes, uh, so what's your story? I go, what do you mean? She goes, like, this is what you do? Do you? I go, well, I'm an I'm a audio producer. This is my dream. I'm looking for work. Nah, nah, nah. She goes, well, I'm in radio. And she goes, I'm a host of a morning show. I'm like, oh, it's amazing. She goes, here's my card. Email me. You never know. Maybe I can help you out. Six months later, I was working at the station. And I've never looked back since. That, that was sort of the moment where you went, wow. Like a fluke, but not. Luck, but not at the same time. Because you put in the work, because you worked hard. But at the same time, you need, a, you need luck in life sometimes. And that's, that's what it was. It's hard to get in this the business. It's not an easy one. It's ultra competitive. If you get a job, there's a hundred other people waiting in line for you to, to mess up so that they can take your spot. 
if you don't come to work every day with the attitude that it could be your last, if you take any job in this industry for granted, you're done. If, if this is what you really want to do, this is my advice. You, want me, you, want, you know what advice I give to a guy that's, that's thinking about it? You better really want it. This is not like cool stuff so you can Snapchat to your friends that, oh, yo, I'm in the studio. No. This is real deal. This is, this is one of the hardest industries that you're, you'll ever get into. But if you want it, it's possible. Is it easy? No, it's not. Is it possible? Yes. What does it take? You gotta work hard, you gotta have the right attitude, and you gotta be hungry. You gotta want it so, so bad that you're willing to sacrifice everything else. And if you're not willing to, then it's not for you. If you think you're gonna come out of here and you're gonna be like, I'm the man, I can make an album tomorrow. No, you can't. Or I can work on a movie set tomorrow. No, you can't. And you won't, unless you're willing to learn and hone the craft and obsess about it and want you and to want to be the best if you can if you understand that then you're set if you come in with this false sense of reality that after now after i leave here i'm going to be the best then you're going to you're going to you're going to land right on your face and that is the same spiel that they gave us on day 1 but it only resonates now more than ever because when on day 1 you're still ignorant about it you're still naive about the world you think, oh, yeah, I can, I can make it in this business. Until you're really in it, until the time goes by and you realize how massive it is, that's where you realize that if, if I get to be able to make a living out of this, amazing.